We're getting some more details for the upcoming Joker sequel, Joker Fully Ado, or just Joker 2, as a lot of people are referring to it now. And it's saying that it's a musical, and this is something that we've known for quite some time now. But now we're getting reports that it's going to be more of a jukebox musical, which has 15 cover songs in it. And for people who don't know, uh, Jukebox Musical is literally just a musical, but instead of having all original songs, it's using a lot of covers and recompositions of existing songs. So that's what we're getting with this one. But they are saying that there are going to be some original songs in this as well. And this is obviously an unusual departure from how the first movie was, because the first movie was more of a gritty character study on Arthur Fleck or the Joker. And this one being a musical, it's obviously very different from that one. But I do think it can work if handled properly. And I have my reasons for that. But first, let's just kind of go into this article from Variety that's talking about it. They got the exclusive information from the studio. Insiders privy to filming and early versions of Todd Phillips' eagerly awaited sequel, Joker, tell Variety the movie leans heavily towards being mostly a jukebox musical as it integrates at least 15 reinterpretations of well-known songs. One is said to be the entertainment from the 1953 musical The Bandwagon, famously associated with Judy Garland. This article goes on to talk about how the Oscar-winning composer of the first Joker movie, Hildur Gutenadotter, will be returning for this one as well in order to recompose the cover songs that they're going to be doing as well as creating some original songs. And all this is to create a symmetry throughout the whole movie of the sound. And it's saying right here, specific details about the plot of Folia Do have not been officially confirmed, but the film is described as a drama with elements taking place in and around Arkham Asylum. And the fact that it's taking place in and around Arkham Asylum with what is essentially two unreliable narrators is why I think having this be a musical is something that could work if handled properly. Variety reported that the budget for the sequel has neared $200 million, a significant jump from the $60 million tag of the original film. The sequel is among Warner Brothers' most anticipated releases this year, following the success of Dune Part 2 from director Denis Villeneuve. And we all remember the first Joker movie was able to gross over a billion dollars at the global box office despite being an R-rated movie because by its very nature, not as many people can actually see R-rated movies like younger kids and teenagers, for instance, aren't allowed to get into them on their own. So it does hurt the actual movie, but still, it didn't really hurt this movie and it was a huge success. But still, I think it's not the best move to try to spend $200 million on the sequel and when I first heard about that, I thought that was ridiculous because with that amount they're spending on it, they need to make probably five, six hundred million dollars at a minimum in order for the studio to consider it a success. So they have a huge hill to climb in order for the sequel to be a success. And I'm not necessarily convinced that this movie will be successful, but I do think it has the potential to be successful. And that might sound strange, but hear me out on this one first, because having this movie take place in and around Arkham Asylum, so a mental hospital, and the protagonist of the story is a mentally ill person. His love interest is also a mentally ill person. I can see this being a musical kind of symbolizes what's going on in their heads throughout the whole movie, because if you remember the first movie, we did follow Joker and saw things through his perspective to a point, but we never actually got to go inside of his head and saw what he was actually thinking. And one thing we remember from the first movie is that he was dancing around a lot like he did not hear music and stuff like obviously we can hear it as an audience, certain music going on throughout the movie. But if you think about it without the music, like you just have Joker just dancing down the stairs when it's just silent, like a normal street going on. It's like, that would be kind of weird to see, but now it looks like for the second movie, they're going to try to follow the same character, but instead we're seeing things through his perspective and also seeing things through this perspective of Harley Quinn, where we actually hear the music inside their heads that's going on throughout this whole situation. And because of that, I can see this actually working as a movie. And I do appreciate the fact that they're doing something different with this sequel instead of just trying to basically retread on the old grounds of what they did with the first one. Because I love the first one, what they did with a gritty character study, and they could very well do the exact same thing for the sequel. But they're trying to take a little bit of a risk on this one and actually do something different with this. So I can respect that. But I'm just not convinced that it's actually going to work because... You got to keep in mind the audiences who like the original movie isn't necessarily the same thing as the audience who likes musicals. Too often studios will fall into this trap of thinking like, okay, the first Joker movie did really well, but how can we make more money? That means you have to bring in a different segment of the audience. So they're saying like, okay, well, let's make it a musical too. So now we're going to attract audiences who like the Joker and audiences who like musicals. 
but that's not necessarily how it works in practice. What really happens is you attract instead of both audiences, you attract the audiences who like Joker and also like musicals. And you can see it kind of like a Venn diagram where you're basically further subdividing your potential target audiences, the more niche you make the material. And that's why I don't think it's necessarily the best approach to kind of do those sort of things. And that's why we're seeing in recent years, uh, like studios try to conceal the fact that certain musicals are musicals or they don't want to necessarily make that the front and center of their marketing as this article is pointing out how even though Wonka and Mean Girls uh, were musicals, they didn't really market it as such. And it says right here, it's no accident that the trailers and TV spots for Wonka and Mean Girls were devoid of songs and dance routines. The marketers for these movies have been openly talking about how marketing these features as non-musicals were an intentional choice to attract moviegoers who are intentionally hostile to musicals. Of course, you can't bait audiences into making a movie successful. It's not like they spent so little on these movies that all you need is that opening weekend gross. And then after that, people are like, oh, it was a musical. I hated it. And then it was like, oh, yeah, but tough to you because we spent so little on this movie that we made our money back. And in some, that's not what happened. These movies were successful because people enjoyed these movies. And even though they were musicals, people are saying like, yeah, it's a musical, but it was still a good movie. And then you got more audiences coming to check it out. And that's why they were successful. And I think that's kind of why they're making the whole musical aspect of the Joker, the whole front and center of the movies marketing, because they don't want to feel like that they're baiting audiences, or at least that's what I think the approach they're doing with this. They're basically letting people know from the get-go that this is going to be a different movie than what you saw with the first one. But if you like the first one, then give this one a chance because it should work still if you like that, since it's a direct sequel to it. Uh, like I said before, though, I think that's a bold move for them to try to make it like that. And I can see people, even if they like musicals, not really interested in seeing a Joker musical like this, but... Still, I am kind of interested in what they're going to be doing with this, or at least I'm willing to give it a shot unless I see the trailer and it just looks terrible. But if the trailer looks interesting, then I think it could actually work as a musical. But that's really just what I think about all this. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think having this be a musical is just a terrible idea and you wanted it to be more like the first one? Or do you think it's actually a good idea that they're trying to do something different with this movie? Because that's kind of the approach I taking on this, but I'm opening to hear arguments on it because I can honestly see either way. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And don't forget to like and share the video because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.